here in Scotland. Uh, we've probably had uh, peatlands since the last ice age of 10,000 years ago. So peatlands are a very important resource here in Scotland, particularly thinking of climate change. But it's been calculated that the amount of carbon that's stored in Scotland's peatlands is equivalent to about 140 or 150 years of our annual carbon emissions. Unfortunately, about 80% of those peatlands um, are degraded in some sort of shape or form, so they're actually actively emitting um, carbon. We have to restore a lot more peatlands here in Scotland uh, in order to allow us to get to any chance of getting to the net, net zero target. If we're going to go to the bother of restoring peatlands, and we've got a lot to restore, we need to ensure they're being effective, and so we need to actually monitor the restoration process. In fact, we actually need to prioritise where we restore, first of all, and then we need to know whether that is being effective or not. And we're not able to do that um, solely uh, through humans, uh, regularly enough in order to get the breadth of data that we actually need. And um, that's where um, the use of satellite technology and remote sensing um, really has a big role to play in helping um, uh, decision-making um, about peatland restoration here in Scotland and elsewhere in the world. So SPAR currently has over 100 satellites in orbit and the reason we have so many satellites is because we want to be able to monitor the Earth in a near real-time fashion. In other words, we want to be able to keep getting information, not just once a day or twice a day, but continuously, because it's that continuous feed of information which allows us to be able to make decisions and, and make the policy uh, corrections that we need in order to move forward in our understanding. So an example of a program that we performed with the UK Space Agency and the European Space Agency was the development of a nanosatellite based soil moisture monitoring product. And you're looking at how the reflectivity of soil changes as a, as a function of the, how wet it is. So the way that we're measuring soil moisture is it's fairly interesting. You're using GPS satellites as a radar. So you're looking at how a GPS signal coming off a satellite reflects off the soil um, that signal is, goes through canopy, it goes through the plants on the ground, and it will reflect more if the soil is more wet than if it's more dry. That signal will be more absorbed. So by the satellite flying over and looking at how these signals are reflecting, we can get a map globally of what is effectively the soil moisture, whether or not there's a forest or plants or otherwise. We have got big aspirations to actually restore the amount of degraded peatlands that we actually have. By restoring them, if we can restore them effectively and they're functioning properly, then we will um, bring more life back into what some people might think is quite a denuded um, landscape.